all this lot round the back. It's Christmas time in the city. Wriggling. Hear them ring. Andy, is that it? Yes, presumably. How did he manage to marry someone like that? Is that Lord Ashfordly? Looks like it. Looks like the rumours are true and all. Imagine Ashford Lee with a wife. David, his lordship's back. Let's be having you. What's he in such a rush about? Christmas trees. Well, I thought most people have got theirs by now. Yeah, that's why he's in such a rush. Here comes trouble. Oh, Mrs. Jowett, how are you? Not good, I'm afraid, Constable Bradley. My poor dear sister Emily passed away yesterday evening in... Ashford Lee General. I'm sorry to hear that. We did hope she might live to see one more Christmas, but uh, it's not to be, which is why I'm in need of your services, Mr. Scripps. My sincere condolences, Mrs. Jowett. Old-fashioned. Well, you wait till you encounter the plumbing. Now, let me introduce you. This is Mrs. Kellett, our housekeeper. My wife, Lady Ashfordley. We're very pleased to see you, Your Ladyship. Oh, Mrs. Kellett, it is I who am extremely pleased to see you. You can't imagine how nervous I've been. A great big house like this. I shall have to rely on you entirely. Whatever I can do to help you, Ladyship. You're all going to have to be terribly patient with me. I'm awful with names. <laughs> <laughs> Just as long as you remember mine. Yes. Now, who were you again? Yes, indeed. Shall we go in? I think we're going to have quite a problem arranging something before Christmas. I have already had a word with the vicar. I'm a church warden, as you know. He thinks he may just be able to fit us in between the Sunday school nativity play and the carol concert. That doesn't leave much time. I've every faith in you, Mr Scripps. Now, as to the arrangements, the casket will, of course, have to be custom-built. Difficult at such short notice. But I do have in stock some very nice solid pine. Mr Scripps, I have no intention of burying my poor dear sister in a ready-made off the peg coffin. No, no, of course not. No. Shall we? And the first moment I set eyes on you, this is what the orchestra was playing. I sent for it specially. You're just an old romantic at heart, aren't you? No, I never was till I met you. And to think, I nearly didn't go on that cruise. When Aunt Fanny suggested it, I thought, oh, a month stuck on a boat. Oh, the ship, darling. She said it would be good for my health. Slow me down a bit. I don't think she expected me to fall in love and marry before we even docked. I think we took everyone by surprise, including the captain. I can't believe he never married anyone before. <laughs> well, I think that was the most romantic part. I'd... No, come in, Mrs. Kelly. It was all right. It's Mr. Scripps. He uh, wanted to be the first to congratulate your lordship and welcome your lovely wife to Aidensfield. Uh, this, darling, is Mr. Scripps. A uh, Vernon Scripps, your ladyship. I'm a business associate of your husband's, which is why I am uh, precipitating myself into your presence. <laughs> well, I'm delighted to meet you, Mr. Scripps. Uh, this is my assistant, David. Well, come on in, David. Don't be shy. <laughs> I won't bite. I... I... He's very pleased to meet you. <laughs> I never thought his lordship would come back with someone like her. David! 
That's the nicest compliment I've had since I arrived. Thank you, David. Uh, Christmas is fast approaching, Your Lordship, and I wondered if we still had a deal. Uh, uh, Christmas trees. Well, I suppose if I don't let you cut them and sell them, you'll just pinch them anyway, which is what he did last year. A most unfortunate misunderstanding. I'd almost forgotten about Christmas. Well, we must definitely have a party. Oh, that would be wonderful. I do so want to meet everyone. It would be the perfect opportunity. Well, in that case, we'll have a ball. <sighs> a Christmas ball. And we'll invite everyone, the entire village. And they can all see what a lucky man I am. Oh, Charlie. That's a wonderful idea. A Christmas ball? Well, that's what Vernon said. Everyone's going to be invited. Sounds fantastic. Well, the last time they had a do like that must have been before the war. Well, here's to her ladyship. What's she like, Vernon? Hang on a sec. 53's at 10 shillings. She's what I call fragrant. Her presence fills the room. You can tell she's a real lady. You know, I don't think I've ever been so happy. How can you say that? I mean, Bing's a nice enough old chap, but his wife's the most crashing bull. I've never been able to say more than five words to her. Well, the champagne helped. <laughs> <laughs> that ghastly dog! <laughs> you think they approved of me? Darling, they were bowled over. What the deuce? Small spot right across the road. Turn the bloody thing out! Wally, what? Her jewels in the bag! Now! have much to go on. Lord Asfordley thought they were medium build. But her ladyship reckoned one was bigger than the other. Possibly a double-barreled shotgun. White van. No distinguishing marks. Probably two chances are halfway to London by now. I'd probably Ventress. Nevertheless, I want you to do the rounds of the local guest houses. B&Bs. Pawnbrokers. Any suspicious characters, two blokes should drive a white van. Well, that narrows it down to half the painters and decorators in Yorkshire. A little more enthusiasm wouldn't go amiss, Bellamy. Yes, Sarge. No, I've got too trusty. Come on, nearly there. Over that one. Down, down, that's right. And open your eyes now. Oh, Charlie, it's gorgeous. Well, you need a little runabout in the countryside. Oh. The Bentleys do come with some. Yeah, I don't think a Land Rover's quite your style, darling. Oh, but it's hardly a runabout. It must have cost a fortune. You spoil me, you know. And um, why shouldn't I? Come on, then. Let's go for a spin. Well, I, um, I'd love to, but I'm afraid I promised the estate manager I'd have a word with him. Things have been piling up a bit since we've been away. There you go. You sure? Absolutely. Don't drive too fast and watch out for sheep. They think they own the place. Bye-bye, darling. I'm telling you, I've had quite enough of it. Harry, the trees are from the Ashfordley estate. They're freshly cut. No, they are not nicked. 
You will not find trees of this quality at a lower price, I'm telling you. Oh. I don't care where you go. <sighs> yes, of oh. course. Gina! All right, love, come in. Sit yourself down there. What happened to you? Oh. I'm, so, I'm such a fool. I was hijacked on the moors. What? <laughs> they stole my car. Rockin' around the Christmas tree at the Christmas party hop. Mistletoe hung where you can see every couple put the star. Rockin' around the Christmas tree, let the Christmas spirit break. Later we'll have some pumpkin pie and we'll do some caroling. You They must have been watching Ashfordley Hall. Saw her leave, followed her. Was she badly hurt? Just cut some bruises. I'm surprised these villains have hung around for so long. A quick opportunistic hit, then they move on. That's the MO I would have expected. Yeah, but why just target the Ashfordleys, though? Well, local gentry live in a big house. It's a fair assumption they've got something worth stealing. Any luck? Not a dicky bird, Sarge. We stopped four white vans and apart from a defective tyre and an out-of-date tax disc, all above board. Anyone for a brew? Well, you haven't got time for tea drinking, Ventress. Lady Ashfordley's just had a new sports car stolen. And if it's still anywhere at all in the locality, you're going to find it. English oak. Couldn't build you anything better if I had six months to do it in. Yes, yes. But the, the handles really are a little garish, aren't they? I could change them. Uh, no extra charge, I trust. <laughs> I'm not made of money, Mr Scripps. Anyway, I would have thought as a church warden I'm entitled to a discount. Oh, I don't do discounts. As a rule. As a church warden, I am in a position to put a lot of business your way. And people often like a personal recommendation from a satisfied customer. Mr. Scripps! Mr. Vody's going to kill us! David. I've already had to walk all the way here from the woods. Can you not see I'm busy? He doesn't look like it might rain. Shoo! Sorry about that. He can be a bit insistent. Shall we say 10%, then? Well, it's not like I haven't driven it before. I've driven it loads of times. Well, Mr Scripps is always with me, but... Well, I don't do something so Mr Vernon's going to blow his top. Go on, Alfred, get in. Watch over, I'll drive. Damn it, old Merton, we've got two masked men running around the neighbourhood armed with a shotgun. They can't be that difficult to catch, can they? They've got to be staying somewhere, some B&B or guest house or something. I have looked into that, Your Lordship. Well, I want them caught, and in the meantime, I want my wife to have police protection. I appreciate your concern, but I don't exactly have the manpower to provide a personal bodyguard. Well, you better find it, hadn't you? If you can't catch these villains, the least you can do is make sure my wife doesn't become a victim again. We are doing our best to catch them. But if I take one man out to guard Lady Ashford... I think a reasonable request in the circumstances, and if there is a problem with it, I'm more than happy to take it up myself with the Chief Constable. That won't be necessary... Your Lordship.
like the sort of car that changes hands round here without you knowing about it. No, I don't touch anything dodgy, you know that. It's not worth it. Well, it's scimitar. I'd have been driven. It's got to be tempting for somebody. Yeah, I heard what Ashfordly paid for it and all. Well, tell us what else you know, then. Well, I did hear there'd been some car ringing going on. A lad called Terry. Got a lock-up down in Back Lane. If anyone's heard about it, he might. This is marvellous, Gina. I really like the idea of Melon. Yeah. Ah, Mrs Kellett, thank you so much. Whilst you're here, perhaps you could give us some advice. We're going to have to take on some temporary staff. Well, shouldn't be a problem. A bit of extra cash is always welcome this time of year. I don't think I'll have any problem getting help with the food. It's more waiters and that sort of thing. I could make your ladyship a list of them we've had before that we know are reliable. Splendid! I don't think Haydensfield's ever seen anything quite like this before. Everyone's talking about it. A Christmas to remember. I think that's what we all want. Constable Bradley's here. He's going to be taking care of you until these damn rascals are caught. What? You mean I'm going to have a minder? Well, just a precaution, my dear. Only when you leave the house. We thought I could maybe pose as your chauffeur. Oh, Charlie, is that absolutely necessary? It's the only way I can ensure your safety, my darling. I really don't think they're going to come back again. Well, they could. They've done very well out of you so far. Also, they might think it's the very last thing anyone would be expecting. Yeah, just do a few repairs for mates, MOTs, that sort of thing. So if someone wanted to sell you a new sports car for cash, you wouldn't take it? Well, I don't have that sort of cash. Well, you could change the number of plates. You could sell it on. It'd make quite a bit. Well, I told you, I do MOTs. Well, this one doesn't look like it needs an M.O.T. It looks nearly new. It's not mine. This bloke just asked me to keep it for him. Tell us about him. I don't know, he's just a bloke. Came round with his mate. He drove a white van? Yeah. As a matter of fact, he did. Suppose you made any arrests to go with it, did you? We have a detailed description of both men. Splendid. You see, darling, Sergeant Merton and Constable Bradley are sorting all this out. I think you've been far too harsh on them. One of the men is mid-30s, thick-set, bit of a bruiser. The other's a bit older, mid-40s, but more of a gent. That's how our witness described him. Now all you've got to do is find them. Well, we were wondering, Lady Ashfordley, if either of those descriptions rang a bell. No. Should it? Well, probably not. But there may be someone, a former employee perhaps, someone with a personal grudge against you. Against me? These may not be random attacks. They may be targeting you in particular. Well, I think you're clutching at straws a bit here, Merton. Who could possibly have a grudge against my wife? Well, you might not even be aware that you've upset them. Well, I think she'd be aware if she'd upset someone that much. Well, it's uh, just a theory. We have to explore every possibility. Of course you do. I'm not offended, darling. Really, I'm not. What, nothing at all? Oh, you are joking. I know it's Christmas. I've got 50 ruddy Christmas trees to shift. And a Merry Christmas to you and all. Couldn't we like, you know, just borrow a van or something? It's Christmas. There's nothing about. Hang on. That must be about seven foot. Oh, fantastic. You've been such a help. Well, having a bodyguard does have its advantages. <laughs> I was thinking, perhaps you'd like to get away early tonight. I shan't be going out again. Well, don't you want me to wait until his lordship gets back? No, I shall be fine. Well, if you're sure. I don't think our two rogues are about to storm Ashfordley Hall. <laughs> I shall be quite safe. Well, I shall see you tomorrow then. Yes, thank you, Mike. Put another large one in for Bernard, will you, Gina? You don't understand people's sensibilities. And would you like your nearest and dearest to make their last journey in a lumber truck? 
Bernard, it wouldn't make any difference to me if I was dead. What's Joyce Jower going to think if she th sees us, eh? Bernard, you worry too much about what other people think. <clears throat> Why don't we just cover the trees up and pretend there's a coffin in the back? Just leave it to me, will you, David? If it isn't her ladyship in person, step this way, lady, see? Where's your manners, Al? You're in the presence of gentry, you should at least doff your cap. Oh, yeah, right. I'm sorry about that, darling. But we were having a few problems getting your attention. You never call, you never write. Look. I want to settle things once and for all. I've got a new home, a new life. I want you gone. <laughs> Do you hear that, Al? She wants us gone. Well, it might be possible. Only thing is, it'll be expensive. Very expensive. La, 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 la. Would somebody like to tell me what's going on? Christmas tree for Mr. Blake. Too. You remember Philip, your lordship? Oh, Mrs. Hopper's grandson? Yes, of course you helped out with the shoot last year, didn't you? Philip, if you just sign at the bottom there. All these extra staff his lordship's hiring. It's going to be a night to remember. Excellent. We certainly hope so. Trisha and I are really looking forward to it. Morning. Ah, yes, the young doctor. Good morning, and you are? Stanley Hodges. Oh, yes, not a local man, I gather. Born and bred in Whitby, but I went away to sea when I was a lad. Oh. Any experience as a waiter? Well, Twenty years as a steward with Cunard. My references. Oh, very impressive. Now, we only need extra help over the Christmas period, so it's going to be no more than two or three days' work, I'm afraid. Suits me. I'm up here to spend some time with my old mum. She's in an old folks' home. I don't think she'll last too much longer. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, you better sign on the dotted line, Stanley. Uh, Mrs. Kellett will explain your duties. Good morning. And your name is? Helen Martin, you <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. George. I saw the cortege pass through the village this morning, Mr. Scripps, and I must say I thought it was a pretty shabby affair. Well, yeah, well, yeah, it was a cram job. Um, if people can't afford too much, we dispense with the frills. Just because people are poor, it doesn't mean that their passing shouldn't be marked with the proper respect. You're perfectly right, of doesn't course. Doesn't cost you anything to put on your morning suit and your bowler hat. No. And that young assistant of yours, David, he was even wearing a cap. I hope you're not going to take this cavalier attitude when it comes to burying my poor dear sister. No, absolutely not. As a church warden, I am not without influence in this village. But just this morning, it was a rush job. I shall be keeping a very close eye on proceedings, Mr Scripps. You may think me old-fashioned, but I regard it as my duty to my sister to ensure that everything is done properly. Yes, I do appreciate that, Mrs Jowett. Hmm. <laughs> it's like a madhouse in there. But oh, I'm, uh, I'm Mike, the chauffeur, by the way. Stan. Stan. Al. Do you fancy a smoke? Uh, not for me. 
You worked for his lordship long then, have you, Mike? Uh, yeah, yeah, quite a while. Gather him and his... Gather him and her ladyship just got spliced. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a bit of a surprise to everyone, really. Um, he was pretty much a confirmed bachelor, yeah. She's quite a looker, who can blame me? Yeah, seems, uh, seems very nice, actually. But it uh, makes a difference working for someone who treats you well, yeah. You pretty much like it here, then? Yeah. Well, actually, uh, to be honest, I'm very lucky his lordship took me on. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I've been in a bit of trouble a couple of years back. Yeah. <laughs> Join the club. I, I wondered if I recognise you. Uh, Durham Nick, five years ago. No, mate, I was in the uh, scrubs. <coughs> yeah, well, we'd better get back to work. Oh, come on, Stan, he's all right. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but when we heard his lordship had got wed, well, you're not exactly what we expected. What did you expect? A loud, booming voice, a pair of sensible tweeds and a couple of really obnoxious <laughs> little dogs. No, what I mean is, is that you're really relaxed and friendly. Well, people from your sort of background, well, they're not normally so easy to get on with. You know, Gina, maybe our backgrounds are not so far apart as you might think. You mean you weren't born with a silver spoon in your mouth? Charles is very conscious of his position in the community. I wouldn't want him to think that his wife was, well, not able to fulfill her social duties and obligations. Well, I don't think it matters where you were born. The most important thing is you make each other happy. And I reckon everyone round here can see with their own eyes how good you are for his lordship. Thank you, Gina. That's very kind of you. But you know, he's made me happy too. You do all sorts of silly things when you were young, but this is the first time I've ever really, truly been in love. Oh, gosh. I must get on. I've got a million things to do. Check under both names, Alf. The second one even lets Slippy done time in the scrubs. Right, we'll get on to the vision and check them out. We'll get straight back to you. Uh, that was Mike, Sarge. He reckons he's onto something. Uh, two men have signed on at the hall who pretty much fit the description that was given to us by the car dealer. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Well, that's all right, Ventress. You can make that call to division from my office. What are you doing in Ashfordley? Shopping, and I thought maybe you could buy me lunch. That'll be my pleasure. I thought so. Uh, how about I meet you at the ball at one? Great. Really sweet setup you got yourself here, see. You know, I'm quite tempted to just stick around. I want you gone by Christmas, that's what we agreed. You know, I think his lordship quite likes me. You never know. He might offer me a job as his butler. We don't have a butler, and we don't need one. Yeah, but you could persuade him, couldn't you, see? You've got him wrapped round your little finger. Oh, Stan, listen to me. Oh, that's the first time you said my name in ages. What do you want me to do? You want me to beg? I'll get you as much as I can. But then you must go. You are a clever girl, aren't you, see? If the charm don't work, then the waterworks will. You promised! Yeah, but you know what a liar I am. Can't seem to help myself. If you're not gone by Christmas, so help me, I'll... You what? Tell his lordship the truth? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, um, 
Mrs. Kellett asked me to find you. Oh, yes, thank you, Mike. That will be all. Thank you. Yes, Your Ladyship. Thank you, Mike. I've just heard back from Division, Sarge. There's nothing on Stanley Hodges, but uh, Alan Martin, he's got plenty of form. Such as? Well, he's a two-year stretch for armed robbery and a list of housebreaking as long as your arm. They must be after something in particular at Ashfully Hall. Otherwise, why would they bother to get a job there? Well, it's a good way of casing the place, Sarge. Get changed, Ventress. Mike can cover the hall, but anywhere else they go, you go with them. Whatever it is they're planning, we're going to be there to catch them. Red-handed. What if she finds out? I'll be sunk. You do exaggerate, Bernard. She's just one old busybody. Who's in a position to influence every other old busybody for miles around? I'm a funeral director, Vernon. Who do you think most of my potential clients are? Just stop mithering, Bernard. You've still got the garage. Oh, thanks very much. Ah, I think that's about it for this delivery. Put the flag over the top and make sure you tuck it in. And let's get them delivered this Christmas instead of next. And put these on top. Now, I'll drive this time. You can't. We won't get them there otherwise. I'll be brief. You'll be pleased to hear that we have two suspects under surveillance. Well, excellent, but uh, why don't you just arrest them? Lack of evidence. We can't possibly prove that they tried to sell Lady Ashfordley's car to a dealer. But what we can't prove is that they are the hijackers. Unless you could identify them, of course. Well, I never saw their damn faces, did we, darling? No. I'm going to be blunt, Lady Ashfordley, and you'll have to forgive me if it causes offence. Is someone trying to blackmail you? What? No, of course not. Why would anyone want to be doing that? I've never heard of such an absurd suggestion. I'm sorry, Merton. I don't see how you get from two rogues holding us up at gunpoint and stealing my wife's car to blackmail. It's just one line of inquiry we've been pursuing. I'm sorry I had to raise it. Oh, you've heard my wife's answer. Indeed. I'll keep you informed of our progress. Yes, do. If you'll excuse us. Looks like your theory could be right, Bradley. She's never going to admit it. Can't believe that's all done. No. Oh. Mr. Vernon, he said, here, you can have a Christmas bonus. And then he said, well, that can help pay for the damage to the truck. He's all heart, is Mr. Vernon. I've been hearing some very ugly rumours, Mr. Scripps. I was hoping they weren't true. We used the hearse to deliver a few Christmas trees. If you don't like it, you can lump it. Beg your pardon. You heard. It's not as if it's going to make any difference to poor dear Emily, is it? I've never been so insulted in my life. You're a rogue and a charlatan just like your brother. I shall be taking my business elsewhere, and so will everyone in Aidensfield if I have anything to do with it. Nice try, darling. You don't think we're going to fall for that old chestnut? The place is swarming with them. They already know the dealer you sold my car to. My so-called chauffeur, Mike. He's a policeman. The chauffeur's a copper. Shut up, pal. They're going to arrest you. I'm serious. No, they're not. Because you were going to hide me. Then tonight, when the party's in full swing, we'll empty the safe. He must have a few goodies stashed away. No. Stan, they'll catch you. You better make sure they don't then, hadn't you, see? Because they catch me, and his lordship finds out that he's not actually married at all. Because you've already got a husband, haven't you, darling? And I think it's about time you gave him a kiss. <laughs> Put 
Lies down if I were you. I might have known you was a dirty, stinking copper. No way out, Al. You're nicked. You reckon? Well, at least you've got one of them in handcuffs. Can't believe they're actually here in the house. You searched the whole house, Sarge. It's definitely gone. Oh, thank goodness for that. Well, if the one we have already talks, he'll probably tell us where they've been staying. We might pick him up there. Well, I've got a suspicion. He's long gone. I'd like to thank you for looking after me, Mike. My pleasure, Your Ladyship. Well, it's done with, and we can look forward to Christmas. I take it you'll both be joining us tonight? Looking forward to it. Excellent. What on earth do you want? Mrs Jowett, it is the season of goodwill, and we've brought a small gift for you. Bernard, are you not going to the ball? I don't really feel like it. Joyce is allowing me to escort her. Joyce? Your brother and I discussed your offer over a glass of sherry, Mr. Scripps. And I've decided to accept. What offer? Emily's funeral, Bernard. We're doing it at a discount of 60%. 60%? Bernard, you cannot put a price on reputation. Drive on, David. Have yourself a merry little Make the Yuletide gay <laughs> Next year all our troubles Will be miles away Mrs. Jowett, how are you? I was so sorry to hear about your sister. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Oh. Happy Christmas. Wow, Right, what are we drinking to? Hello? Sounds like a good toast to me. To love. To love. To love. And Christmas. Excuse us for a minute. I was, um, I was going to save this until Christmas morning. I thought you could wear it tonight. It's lovely, thank you. Since this house was filled with so much laughter and merriment. Thank you. How very touching. I don't want to disturb the party too much, so if you just step this way, Your Lordship, and open the safe, then we'll be on our way. Won't we, darling? What's going on? my wife. Strictly speaking, she's my wife. But if you did want me to divorce her, then uh, I might be persuaded at a price. 
I'm so sorry, Charlie. Understand. It's simple, really. We had a nice little racket going, didn't we, see? Working the cruise liners, targeting rich old codgers like you and then fleecing them. It all changed when I met you. Too right. Dump me flat, she did. Too tiny little madam. I love you, Charlie. I know what you must be thinking, but... I fell in love with you. And that's the truth. Right. Let's get this safe open. We haven't got all night. Good at the old walk works, isn't she? If you didn't know any better, you'd almost think she cared. Stan, we'll have to get out through the kitchen. Let me go check if the coast is clear. See? Now that's what I call true pragmatism. Back in a minute. Make it snappy. Was it my old dad used to say? Never trust a woman. Especially not your wife. Family heirloom, I trust. I remember you now. On the ship, you were one of the stewards. Very good. Something a bloke like you even notices servants as a rule. Stan, come on. It's all safe. It's OK, Charlie. in on it, you know, all along. We planned it together. Right, damn rascals just trying to save his own skin. Get him out of here, Merson. <laughs> He's got you, Will. Suck it. Get him out of my sight. That was very gallant. But they'll soon discover the truth. What is the truth? I fell in love. Listen, take the car. I don't think you've got time to change before they come back. What will you tell them? You just leave them to me. You just go. Oh, John. Attractive woman, who is she? She's the local doctor. Trish, I'm just trying to warn you. As what, Mike? A friend? It's a police matter. Get out. The invitation still stands. I'd love to have dinner with you. That's great. 